Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I just did a show of hands. How many people in here are using NX12? NX11? 10? 9? Earlier? NX at all? Other CAD systems? Okay. Um, so, this is, uh, let's do an NX12. NX12 originally it came out in, uh, what, November 17th of last year, so it's been out, you know, roughly a year ish. Uh, it's now up to 1202. Uh, we are going to, to take, take a look at what's rolled up in NX-1202, as well as with the future of NX, um, and uh, basically what I'm going to cover. So what, what is what, it's NX-12 now? What's going to be next? Is it NX-13? It'll be NX-13. So um, they're just going to drop the number and just call it NX. i got to try. I have to try. Is it working? Okay. So uh, I'm also going to show some of the, some of the new user interface uh, uh, changes, uh, selecting and deselecting objects, fifth screen. I find it to be a little bit, uh, still learning it. It's a different muscle memory for me. Uh, uh, everything is in a tag format, much like your, uh, your Internet Explorer browsers and, and uh, Chrome and Firefox browsers. And there's a couple things in here for, for uh, uh, administrators, pretty much pretty exclusively for uh, like partutility.exe. But what is the NX continuous release process? Basically, right now, Siemens is supporting multiple channels of NX. Okay, you've got NX 12.02 is out, 12.01 is supported, 12.0 is still supported, 11 is still supported, at least until November, I think. Um, then the, the, the next release comes out in January. Uh, in, <coughs> starting in January, they're going to start with this continuous release process, much like you see in Windows 10, if you're familiar with that, where every month you're going to get an update, and every six months you're going to get a big update. The big update is a schema change. Whenever you hit the schema change, you can't go back. So if I make a part in the May 19 release, I can open it in the January 19 release, no problem. If I make a part in the September 19 release, I can't go back to the January 19 release and open that same part. Um, what I got here in the, in the little bit of red, oh, yeah, that's, that's a little bit closer there. Um, so the way I see this really playing out with most of our customers is that uh, uh, I think everybody's going to wait on that January 19, wait at least that first monthly release comes out, see how stable everything is, and then uh, go live with it, go and direct with it. Then they're going to pause right here, the next big schema change, wait for this next little release to come out, and then jump ahead on that one. It's kind of where I, I kind of see this going. Uh, the NX is going to have uh, some indicators on it to tell you whether or not you have the latest version, if there's a new version that's available for you to download. Um, that's all uh, to be, some of it's to be determined. Uh, so one of the things that, that and I'm an NX geek, I love NX, I love playing around with it, when the new, when the new tool's coming out, I want to find out what the new tools do, and with an with a increased cadence of release, I get to see new tools faster. So that means you get to see new tools faster. Um, and if you're currently working on, say, NX 10, you've got a whole new set of tools out there that you don't even know about, um, that are available on NX, uh, NX 11 and 12. Uh, so some of those will be showing up today. Uh, reduced deployment costs, I got a little red asterisk on there. They're deploying some tools, so if you do write NX open uh, programming for your cook, for your company, there's going to be some tools released that will help us uh, identify if those tools will work in the next release that's coming at us. So uh, instead of just saying, okay, well, figure it out on your own, go off and do some testing, um, because of this increased cadence, um, we need to be able to be better at deploying quicker. A lot of, a lot of places will skip releases. Because the deployment costs are so big and there's so much investment with testing, make sure you got a dev database up and everything is running, um, running properly and all the stuff works in the new release and then everybody moves to it. I know people who won't even move to NX that, until it's at the dot three release and it's fully mature and they'll stay there for a few years and then they'll wait a few more years and then bump to that one. So it's a completely different approach. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to it for a while. Okay. Looking forward to, to helping to support those who are also jumping into it. Uh, some of the uh, user interface changes is it's a, it's a tabbed interface. I can I can have multiple windows on my screen at the same time. Uh, I, I'm going to post the uh, the movies up, uh, or the, rather the, the powerpoints up on the, on, the, on our website, so it can be downloaded. They have little movies inside of them as well. Uh, selecting and deselecting objects is a little bit different. I'll show that off here in just a second. Um, I can drag and drop between these windows that I have up here. 
So I can drag notes from one to another. I can drag features from one to another. So if I just want to copy it from, from one part to another part, because it's a, a bolt pattern on one, I don't want to put that, the, the, the clearance holes on the other one. I just copy them over, change it from a thread hole to a clearance hole. You did this in Industry Tool Center? Yes. Yeah. So you can drag and drop between your windows because it's just an index environment. You basically just, it's essentially assisting you in the copy paste. So I can copy a feature from one right now, go into another part and paste it. It's just allowing me to do that a little bit quicker. Has to be really close. Um, so here's one that actually is a pretty decent one. This is a, I've got my design, I've got threaded holes on the left. I don't have any holes at all on the right, so I'm going to copy them. I'm just going to drag them to the other to the other window. So it's just like a paste operation. So I have to tell it what to do. I have to give it new parents. So I give it the, the, the planar face, give it a reference, tell it where to go. It's got an external reference on there as well. I tell it the body to, to, to cut it out of. And those are going to be threaded holes as well. But I just copied the feature over. But I can edit that feature and turn them into parent holes. Very quick and easy. So both both are up on the up on the screen at the same time. And uh, uh, you can you can edit them. Page down. Oh yeah, 3D 3D selection box is a new thing. Uh, it allows you to pick a pick an object and then essentially build a 3D box around it. Uh, it's it's interesting. It has it has its use cases for sure. You can have inside or outside crossing, and you can adjust the size of the box. You can adjust the location of the box, and everything that's inside that box is going to be selected. That's working on that. Uh, starting in NX12, you can also password protect your part files. Instead of like zipping them up with like WinZip and putting a protection on WinZip, where when it's when that part is extracted, it's uncontrolled. And this works in a native environment only. But uh, as an admin, I can I can generate a key. Then that key could be applied to your parts. You can put a password protection uh, on those parts, and then you can send it out to where that part cannot be modified. It can only be viewed. It can only be modified under local control or read only. Um, in order to be a full administrator and, and remove those uh, remove those controls as well, uh, you basically create a password safe file and keep that in a very safe location. Because if you lose it, you may not be able to recover your parts. Um, I have not checked with GTAC to see if they have recovery tools, but without that key, you may not be able to get them back. Um, Part security uh, is another uh, uh, executable. It's now in your NX bin folder, and that's the, the tool that we use to, to create the, uh, the, 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 the encrypted files. And there's a there's a uh, uh, in your customer defaults is when is, is where you have a little checkbox over here for enabling uh, part protection. Uh, so at a site level, as an admin, I can lock that out so users couldn't accidentally lock up parts and then forget what the key was and not have, not be able to get back into them. If you have any kind of setting of protection. Oh, yeah, we don't need to watch that. Okay. Uh, there's a few other things in, 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 a, in a Sketcher that helps you uh, uh, with automatic alignment constraints. Uh, we can show that off there a bit, too. A second, I broke them up into multiple PowerPoints because they get big. But these movies are better. So I want to show off uh, some variable offset face and uh, uh, combine tools. We'll show those off live. Uh, if you're not familiar with flattening and forming, it is an amazing tool, and I like to show it off or any, any place I can. Um, and I'll show off a little bit of lattice. Uh, they've increased the ability of the lattice work, so if you're doing uh, additive manufacturing, you can do some, some significant light weighting inside of your parts. You can hollow them out, put lattice work on the inside of it, and then do 3D printing to create that as a lightweight structure. And we've got multiple types of lattices now. Uh, we're, we're, we'll be seeing in the future coming out that you can build your own what's called a unit cell, so you can make the cell look the way you want it to and operate the way you want it to. There's 15 or so uh, um, in, uh, in the uh, in NX right now. Uh, there's a new feature in uh, 12 that allows you to delete uh, a feature that has children, child part, child uh, dependencies, uh, and you can now have it ask you if you want those children to be deleted. So if I delete a data plane, and there's a bunch of stuff that's also associated with that data plane, all those things go away currently. But now I can have it ask me if I want those to go away, and then I can make a new data plane and reparent it. 
I tend not to work that way. I tend to build my thing I'm going to replace it with first, and then replace it, and then get rid of the, the feature I want to get rid of. But now I can tell the delete child features that way. Sheet Metal has had some significant improvements uh, to it, where uh, the before in uh, previous versions you could do a single flange. Now I can do uh, multiple flanges. It's always been not really a challenge. You always had to, to, to do a little bit of extra work to tie the height of all your flanges around to make, a, say, a box. So now I can just create uh, a, 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 a tab, put four flanges on, they're all exactly the same height, they're all the same feature. Uh, renew feature. So if you're, been, if you're familiar with NX in the, in the, 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 in the past, um, if you open up a part in NX11 that was created in NX6, uh, that part automatically updates. So if you're in a team center database, you see this little modified flag, and I didn't do anything to it. It just updated because that's what it does. It updates it to the newest code. They stopped doing that. So right now, so they're, they're, they're kind of pushing that down to, to us now, so that uh, if you want to renew the features and update the code to the, the new feature, and you have the tools in there now to what's called renew feature. And I have an example in here of one that uh, um, that doesn't that does work uh, as long as I can renew that feature. So I want to I want to thicken this and I want to do uh, 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 multiple different thickness values. So the whole the whole uh, sheet is going to be thickened to six millimeters. I want to put some belting that's chem milled down to four millimeters and the pockets that are milled further down chem milled further down to two millimeters. And everything is working on a, what's called region uh, uh, region boundary curves. So when I go to select the region boundary curves here, you can see how poorly it's selecting that belting area. I turned out previews, you can see. So it's not picking things properly. So that, 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 that it seems that uh, maybe my tolerances are off. But I can go into what's called renew feature, find that that uh, what's really happening there is a, there's a wrap curve that needs to be updated. So you find that wrap curve down there at the bottom. I tell it to update. It updates the code, and you can see a little warble right there, a little bump in the, in the uh, that I point out. And then when I renew the code, it updates it. Where before, it would have updated it automatically and made a change that you may not have expected. So um, now, you, now you're kind of forced to do this manual update, and you, uh, you can watch what's going to happen on the screen. And now I select the belting, all of the all of the belts, all of the belt areas uh, highlight properly. And then collect one, collect all the the, the, the two millimeter thick pockets. Let me jump this forward a little. There we go. Got preview turn off just so it can generate a little bit faster. I'll show the results, and then I have a multiple thickened part in one operation that where before it was it was beginning to fail because the, the features were out of date. A uh, new tool in NX12 is a thing called Animation Designer. It's a new uh, uh, task that, or not, it, it's a new environment that you can work with. Uh, basically, if you have sketches, uh, line geometry, physical CAD geometry, you can uh, tell it what to do. You can make gears, joints, uh, position motors. Uh, you can put in sensors, uh, measurement sensors. You can measure in the graph. Uh, this is a pretty interesting one here where uh, this is just a few sketches. Where we're going to place in uh, check my time on there. Um, you place in the constraints that you want, and I can animate essentially to these sketches. So you can kind of do uh, uh, some initial studies to find out if, if your concept is going to work, and then move forward with an actual 3D design. What we're going to see coming in the future is a thing called reverse kinematics. So if you have like a pick and place table, where if I have a part that I want to pick up, and my, my slides are all there, I can say, I want you to go, go from here to pick this thing up. And it will figure out what those motion profiles are, and then you can go through and adjust the timing of it. So the reverse kinematics is that it's coming and the next the next releases are going to be pretty pretty interesting. So if you get into motion at all, you can take the, a crane arm or a robotic arm, go from its, its uh, 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 null position essentially and take it out and pick up a part, bring it back and drop it into a box. Uh, and, and essentially you're teaching it what to do and then it will follow that profile. 
This is at the designer level, where we've had NX Motion for a long time, but it's at the analyst level, right? So most designers don't get into the analyst level of, uh, of uh, uh, analysis there. So this brings that kind of down to us, the, 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 the everyday workers. So going to play it, he didn't put a position motor in there yet. So I put a position motor on it. So this thing can slide back and forth. This is an amazingly easy tool to use. I didn't look at the help documentation once, I just kind of fiddled around with the buttons and I was able to make stuff work. So it's, it's really quite, uh, quite uh, an, an easy to use tool. And there's one thing that's missing there, we need to be able to tie the wheel to the, the little wobbly ground. So the last thing to go in here would be a new joint, and it's going to be like a, a point on a point on curve. And now I can play it, it actually rolls around. So that's animation designer. Here's another one, <coughs> kind of maybe accelerate this a little bit, but basically, uh, I put concentric constraints on all of these, these little pins to put a position motor down here, uh, on this red, uh, uh arm. Kind of fix the front wing, because I don't really, there's nothing really holding it in place. And then, uh, put a slide joint down here at the end, because we don't have slide joints in assembly constraints, not yet. Or screw joints, or things like that. We don't have those in assembly constraints as yet. So, uh, when I, when I push this into a, a, a the, well, this is actually putting on all the constraints. Let's jump this forward a bit. When I put it into uh, uh, Animation Designer, it automatically picks up all those constraints for me, but I'll do the work again. That's kind of nice. Uh, it, tells, it, it tells you what it, what it just did, which is great, and it builds, builds your, uh, your list of uh, constraints and joints. Extend this out just a little bit further. Uh, I put a position motor on uh, this, this arm, and then hit play. And I can watch it extend out. Is that in like Mark 3 or Mark 1 or what? It's actually it's completely separate. This is a floater. Um, uh, Taylor could probably give you a little bit deeper, deeper information on exactly where it, rides, or it resides, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, it does float. So here I can have a, just a drag handle. I can extend it out manually, pull it back. And once I extend it out, to these different locations, I may have some faces in there that I want to capture. I can then capture that as an arrangement in my assembly. Done. Right? So now I don't have to have an animation designer. I can just go back to regular modeling and assemblies, and anybody else can just change the arrangements, extended, retracted, up, down, whatever whatever the uh, uh, arrangement happened to be for this. And one thing I want to show off here, well, when I have to sit down the microphone and do this one, but in Team Center 11.3, uh, it's actually a, a, a weird kind of a patch level, but starting really in Team Center 11.4 and 12.02, there's a thing called uh, minimal load lightweight display. So if you're familiar with Linux and how it loads, you can do partial loading, you can do full loading, you can do partial loading with lightweight display, and you can do full loading with lightweight display. And this is minimal loading. Maybe when you open up a large assembly, it just sits there with nothing. You see it. You see it scrolling through all the parts. It just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Loading all those parts in the background, you get to see nothing until it hits about fifty-five percent, and all of a sudden, finally, you have your entire assembly. Which is it's slow and painful. This is a different approach. So what it's doing is it's loading. You have to interact with the system as it's loading. Um, I can. There's a little uh, play and pause button down in, in, the, in the graphics window, so you can pause it, rotate it around, make sure it, it is what you want it to be, and then continue to play and, and move forward with it. It also is multi-threaded, so we're seeing more and more tools that are that are, that are being able to exploit um, uh, all of the cores on your on your machines. So I'm going to switch over to Cat. So here I've got <clears throat> I've got a uh, a few parts uh, open. I'm going to look at my 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 block drawing here. I'm going to go back and just drag my tab off, and it becomes disconnected. I can drag it to a different monitor if I want to, uh, with just one monitor on the, up, up on the big screen. It makes it a little bit harder, but I can, I can use this uh, manipulator down here to make it a side-by-side. -side. 
I can go find my, uh, this is my, my top block, so I'll make this a, uh, rather, use my radio pop-up here. And then I'll take this and drag it over maybe on top. Now I can see my, the, the part that I'm drafting, the part that, the, the 3D part that on, on the screen, if I decide to make changes on this part, I can see him live in my, in my, uh, uh, model. And as I move my space ball around, wait for it to catch up to me here. Uh, wherever my mouse is, my space ball is, is got act, is, is active in those windows. I don't have to do anything like clicking in those windows to activate them. So I can see in my 3D model that I'm putting the, the edge blends on. Um, and if I execute that down here, my, my drawing, which as you see up here on my, my, my top border bar, um, I've automatically switched over to drafting. Just by clicking in this window, I'm in drafting. I didn't have to do an application switch here. So I look at my part navigator, I update my, my views. I can zoom in. Is this the right part? Oh, I, I, I closed it. I didn't actually update it. There we go. So, so now, now you can, that thing of jumping back and forth all the time, uh, and then re re remember, re forgetting that you're in drafting, you gotta go back into modeling to do a, do a change, and go back to drafting, you gotta go back to drafting, that's all gone. All those little irritating little uh, um, uh, application jumps are gone. So that this is, once you get used to this, you can't go back. It's really, really difficult to go back. Um, uh, control tab, another one in NX12 where I can just control tab and bring up the, all the different different uh, uh, part, file, part files that I have open at any time. I could pick them directly off the screen or just continue to tab through and get the ones that I want. And if I, if I close the window, I didn't close the part. So on this one I will because it's a drafting part, so I'll just close that, uh, that drafting file out. But this part is, is open, but it's also open in my assembly. I didn't close the part, I just closed the window that it was in. So, let's see, 412, I've got a little bit of time here. Let's do uh, uh, the combine tool. This is one where I need to I'll check something on here. Uh, preferences, visualization. Let's do the other one, file preferences. Performance. No. So somewhere in here, after I did all this, this, this laborious work to create all these sheet bodies, there's, there's going to be... I want to create the solid out of this eventually. So I can use trim and extend. Uh, I can use uh, uh, just trimming and sewing and trying to tie all this together. There's a tool called combine. I'm going to use my command finder to find that. You're making something up there. So the combine tool allows me to pick uh, regions that I'm selecting and uh, keeping. And I can keep or discard. I can flip them back and forth. Keep remove. I can continue to work my way around the part. Select another body here. See how it's going to react. Um, this one isn't reacting all that well, but I'm, I'm not picking it very well in here. But now I, I can switch to keep, and it's going to work. I don't know how well that's picking it up. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a very close range on it. Um, so I'm going to use the combine tool again, but I'm just going to select all of these, and it found a volume for me. That's it's it. This, when I first saw this one, I was like, oh, I'm going to use that. It's the very, very first chance I got, I got to use that on another, uh, on the production part. Um, where's my, go up here. Um, <coughs> where did it, oh, there it is. There we go. So I got a, I have a relatively simple, um, sheet, sheet body part here. It's just a thin wall part. I'm going to turn on some uh, some more bodies that are in here and just show them. I'll show them all. I'm going to do a variable offset. So this is a, one of those things that if you know it exists, you would change the the way you would design a part to begin with. So, <laughs> thanks, Bjorn. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. And if you start looking for like offset or variable in the command finder, there's a lot of things here. But I do variable. Offset, variable offset face. So it's in one of these more pull downs. If you haven't seen this tool before, it's pretty impressive. But I'm going to select the, the, my target body, then I select the regions that I want to, to start manipulating. The first one I pick, I get these drag handles. 
Now under settings, I can either I can either um, I'll set as a new body or I'll set the original. So it's it's up to you. You can keep the original body. And I'll switch that to offset original. And you kind of see how the, the the preview is already showing what's going on here. But I have two drag angles. If I pick another region boundary, now I have more drag angles. If I pick another region boundary, I get more drag angles. So very quickly, I was able to take a relatively simple piece of, uh, a relatively simple sheet body and turn it into something more, much more complex. There's a few other tools that are available in 12 that uh, allow you to project onto and create uh, bump outs and whatnot uh, uh, into, uh, on, the, on the part instead of just having uh, cross curves or cross bodies that, that create an intersection curve on there for me. Uh, but it's a, it is a pretty powerful tool. I have my team center environment set, set up here. I'm going to go to my uh, assembly load options. And down here under my options for partially loading, I'll pull it up a little higher on the screen. I pull this down to minimally load lightweight display. The new option. I'm just going to say, OK, I've got a ship over here. I'm going to right click and open this guy. <coughs> and what happens is the first thing it does is it switches, switches me over to the assembly navigator and shows me all of the top level assemblies and they're just empty right now. It's, it's doing stuff in the background that we don't really see. Um, and I'm recording and I'm doing a couple other things on the screen. But now I get my little pause button. You can see how the part is, the, 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 the ship is beginning to populate. So this is another large assembly tool that we have um, that I can use to uh, rotate this thing around, zoom in and out, pause, get a little closer. Say, well, this is, I could say this is good enough because I want to work in this area. Select my part, um, stop, go to uh, assemblies, open by proximity, open up the things around it. I've seen enough of what I want to see. Um, or I can just hit play and keep going. I have this ship in VR too if you want to have a little experience. <laughs> you, can, you, can walk through the, you can walk through the walls essentially and uh, um, uh, uh, ex experience being inside this little boat. So there's a Siemens. Uh, 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 AE that was at a shipyard for a long time. He built this on his own. So this is called NX01, but because you can never, you can never show off customer data, so he did this, did this in the hotel room in the evenings. So I appreciate that about him here. <laughs> um, it's still, it's still loading parts. Although it looks like most everything is loaded here. That's just the outside. It's still loading parts in the inside. I still have my, my little pause button here. So. It's a great tool. Uh, started in the latest version of N uh, uh, for NX uh, for Team Center 11.4, uh, 12, of course, and then uh, NX 12.02 has got that. And now it's finished loading. It's fully it's fully loaded and, and uh, well, not fully loaded, but it's fully present and, and on my screen. How many parts is that? Good question. Components. Uh, I think there's nine, just under 9,000 individual components uh, uh, on this part, or 9,000. Are you going to tell me? No, you're not going to tell me. Uh, I think there's, oh, there it is, 13,751 objects selected. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, not bad at all. So, One of the last things I want to cover is uh, some synchronous modeling examples. And if you are, if you've loaded NX12, 1201, MP1, they changed our measuring tool significantly. Significant. I'll show off a few examples here. So uh, the one the one that got me on that one was I was actually in front of a customer and I found it. <laughs> so I was able to recover. It was all right. It's a relatively easy tool to use. So I use synchronous modeling for a bunch of different things because this may not be the part that I made. I just have to draw it. So I want to do some. I want to do some interrogation on it. So I come home and I go to uh, let's say resize face. So there's a resize face right here. So put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So if I do a resize face and I pick this face, I see that I have 18 equal. Radiuses on that same thing. So right now I know the counts. I didn't have to go through and count them. So as a drafter, that helps me out tremendously. 
But then I see also there's equal par. So if I click on that, I can see, well, there's, there's another face over here that's got the same size hole on the far side. Now I know that I've got 18 there, 30 there, 13 there, and I've got a, a 30 total picks. I haven't done anything in sequence modeling. I'm just using it to help interrogate the part. So again, I can do a resize face, pick that counterboard screw hole. I can see that has a nine millimeter hole and how many I get right there. One, one part I like to show this one off on is I have an old part here. Uh, you may have seen this part before if you've been to, well, especially my demonstrations, I've shown this part a few times. Um, the boss comes in and says, this pocket has to get wider, uh, and you have to, it's, you know, five o'clock on Friday, and you want to get out of, the, out of the office and go home. Well, it's got a sketch. Let's go in and edit the sketch. Pull this over here, finish it. This should be easy. Let's, let's pretend that there are actual values on there. Goes through, updates all my features. And in the end, Okay, well, there's something else here. Let's figure out what this one is. Oh, I got the wrong, the wrong uh, screw there. I think I hit F1. Activate on my top, yes. How many people have the F1 key still on their keyboard? Mine's, mine's gone at, at my office, I think. So here's an extrude. I'm going to double click on that extrude. Oh, no. Anybody recognize this dialogue? There's probably a few people here. Right? This is an old, old dialogue. It predates me. I've been doing this for 16 years. Pat might know it. There's a couple other guys who might know how to, how to go into one of these old, old sketches and redefine it. Um, but everybody else in my office is 22 years old. They don't, they've never seen this stuff before. So I'm going to get out of this, and I'm going to control Z and get rid of my edit there. So because I can't edit that sketch, actually, that's, um, bring that back just real quick. If I go into uh, edit sketch dimensions, I, I, I get some sketch dimensions that I can work with. But maybe I could dig out where this sketch is. It's it's an older it's an older guy as, as has been has been proven. So I'm going to go in and just do a synchronous modeling move face. That's right there, big button on the outside. Move face. I flip the direction of it. If this is in if this is drafted or in a drafting, uh, somebody's already done the drawing for it. Um, because I'm not actually doing another sketch extrude and overriding those faces, the face and edge ideas are the same. So I just did I just did a, a, a push face on this. Now, the one of the questions that always comes up is, does it subvert the original design intent? Well, yes, in this case, it certainly does. But the design intent is an old design, and we can't fix it. So um, it still still shows up as link. It still shows up. I got a feature down here that tells me exactly what I did to it. I moved it 46 millimeters. Um, there's one thing that you see a little bit, uh, sometimes you see it in, in CAM translations, you'll find a, uh, uh, a part that actually opened the wrong part. Here's the same part, but there's some sort of a, a, a translation error, and I got a hole that's off. And I want to fix it. I verified with the person who actually designed this one. We found that there's a translation error or something something moved, but uh, the, 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 the the child feature didn't move. I'm going to use synchronous modeling to fix this. So there's a, a tool here called Make Coaxial. So I, I select the motion face first. So that's the face I want to move because that looks like to be the face that's off. And... Uh, I also see uh, coplanar axes that are in here. Uh, it's not necessarily what I want, so I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to select the stationary face, and then I've just created a, a geometric relationship between these two, and now uh, uh, this is, is, is concentric, essentially, to the, to the, 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 uh, the counter bore right there. I was able to fix that. There's another one out here that, that I'd, I'd like to show you, just because it's so oh, impressive. Can so quick? Can you do that again? Sure, I'll do it. Control-Z. So, That's it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So it's just off. Um, all I'm going to do is create a relationship. There's a relate section down here. I can create linear, angular, radial dimensions. I can make things coplanar, coaxial, tangent. Um, I'm going to make this one uh, coaxial. Pick my motion face. 
Pick my stationary face, and it's done. Um, if I wanted to take a pocket and just get rid of the pocket, I could use a delete face to get rid of not holes, but faces there. Let's pick. go ahead and pick tangent faces. I could get all tangent faces in there. That's one way of getting rid of that hole. If I wanted to do another one where I could do a relate, where I could make this coplanar, I'll pick that bottom face and make it coplanar to this face. Now, it's going to fail because it's, it's, I've got a whole bunch of Edwins in there, and I need to go back and, and pick my motion group to get these guys. Oh, that's not going to work. Let's do a different way. So I'm going to use a uh, delete face again. But this time I'm just going to delete a blend. And I'm going to delete connected blend faces. They're gone. Now I can do um, make coplanar. Pick that bottom face, this top face, and it's gone. Now why would I want to use make coplanar versus move face versus some of the other tools that are in there? Each one of the tools have, have different algorithms behind them. So sometimes one works. I can't explain why. Uh, sometimes one doesn't work, and I can't explain why, but the other one does. So I don't, in the end, I don't care. I've done what I need to do. Um, so another another interesting one on this one I like to show off is and I picked that. Now I've moved it and I've created a concentric, but I want to I want to move this this whole feature down this this rib. So I'm going to pick coaxial faces. We've got coaxial faces near and probably far. Let's see how far we are down there, and I'll do offset as well. And I want to just Drag this guy, get uh, another face there. Okay, so I have to do that one again. See how my picks are working here. Coaxial. Okay. Didn't quite get what I wanted there. Let's see if I can pick up an offset. As well, it's not liking that one. Let's try a different way. Oh. There's going to be a limit here. I'm going to run into limits eventually. But I did a pretty radical change to this part with synchronous modeling. So, uh, we, we do some, uh, as Pat alluded to, we do some false, uh, casting falsifications where I have to go through and delete all the blends. Synchronous modeling is, is the tool that I have to use for this. I do delete face. I can do a blend size. It's a big, it's a huge ask to do everything under five millimeters as it picks up everything on the entire part. Um, if anyone in the room is disappointed that this doesn't work, um, you haven't been working in NX for a while. But you get a little report over here that tells you what's what's happening. So there, it's, it's, it's not happy in these certain areas. So I can I can see what's going on in these different areas. And maybe I can just back this off instead of trying to delete everything in one shot. I'll do it with uh, uh, just a blend and connected blend faces. And now that blend is gone. Uh, synchronous again, and I'm going to section this part so I can see through it. Uh, there's a tool in here called Make Offset. So this is one where I've got kind of a, a cover, like a, like a gear cover, and we added a dome onto it just on the top of it, but we didn't really shell it out. So I want to make this offset. So I want to select my motion face, select my stationary face, tell it that I want this to be six millimeters thick. And now it's six millimeters thick. So Without having to go back in the further back in the history tree and figure out where to do this properly, I could just add that dome section on there, make offset, and I've now created an additional clearance. Oops. Section that again. So if I suppress that feature, you see what I see the I just added a dome on top of it, and then I want to I want to essentially local essentially place a local shell on that on that base, if you, if you will. Forming and flattening, uh, if I come down to my my surface tab and go into forming and flattening, this is a tool that uh, will take complex sheet geometry and flatten it out. So I'm going to select my source face, my stationary face, and uh, give it an origin. 
And it's asked you to specify the U and V directions. They've, they've added a little bit of complexity to this tool. And I can just give it a preview and it'll start to flatten. Down here I get a distortion map. Of course, if I try to flatten this little box, it's going to really be distorting the heck out of the top up here. Um, I have length, area, and angle uh, uh, distortion maps that I can show off. But over here I can do a uh, rip edges. I'm going to uncheck preview on this one just because it, the, 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 it takes a little while to calculate this as I walk through the part. I'm going to pick these edges. I hope they pick them in the, in the same order, front and back. Even if it doesn't work, it, it still looks impressive. Go back to preview. And you can see my part is kind of banana in a little bit. So I'm going to uncheck preview and I want to tell it I want it to have some fixed elements in here. I do not want this fixed element, I want this to be my fixed element. Look at my, look at my preview again. And now it's straightened it back out, got rid of that banana appeal to it. And then I've taken very complex geometry and flattened it out. Again. So this does not care how it got here. This is going to flatten the geometry. It doesn't care what the physics are. It uses a, it, it, it basically paints the surface with squares and does uh, length, area, and angle preservation on those squares and does the best it can to minimize the changes to those squares. Uh, it, if this was three quarter inch thick mild steel, it, 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 would, it, it wouldn't matter because it's just going to flatten the topology. That's all it does. It, it, you'd have to go back through some analysis tools to make sure that you're not overstressing the part and tearing it up. But uh, um, this is this is a this is a great flattening tool for um, um, sheet bodies, as, as, uh, as we've seen. Okay, what do we got next? Come on, I. So I have. Uh, a new measure tool I want to show off. If I look at my analysis tab, there used to be a bunch of things over here. It used to be like simple measure, um, uh, measure body, measure face, a whole bunch of different things that were over here. Now I just have a single measure tool. So it does take a little while to get used to this tool. I'm gonna, it's, it's right here on my left mouse button, click out in space, and I have a measure right here. Now if I hover over a face, or hover over an edge if I have an object selected here. It tells me the perimeter, the area, just hovering over it. Okay? I don't have to actually select it. I haven't executed anything yet. Um, if I hover over a line, it should tell me the length of a line. So there's a curved length. It's not going to tell me the spline. Oh, there it is. I just had to refresh. So I'm going to do a point. Pick that point, and it tells me that that's the point. If I pick this point, it tells me the minimum distance between the two points and the point on the curve, how the, the distance following the curve between those two points. Can you kick it to an info window still? So a couple different things I can do with that. So yes, I can kick it to an info window. There's a, there's a show results and information window. There's a new tool that's even better than that. There's a send, send results to, con, to the NX console. I say okay, I get another little button that shows up over here, and this is persistent. So it's like having a persistent information window open, and everything that I send to this, this uh, console, uh, I can copy paste, I can grab things out of here, I can right click and clear this, uh, and do more measurements. Uh, so I'm going to come over here. I want to measure this part here. So if I click and hold my, oops, I had point selected, so I'm going to get rid of that guy. Let's reset my tool. I'll switch it to object. I'm going to click and hold mouse button one to force out my quick pick, and I want the whole solid body. When I pick the whole solid body, I get this, this rather large amount of detail, and I'm able to make, um, if I click on the, the one that looks like an expression editor, I've created it as an associative expression. I click on the one that's right next to it. It'll it'll display that that uh, uh, so I'm going to pick uh, associative mass, uh, associative label. And I'm going to open up this guy over here, and I can I can create a requirement on the fly right here on the on the screen. I can then say I want the center of gravity also to be associative. Let me check that guy, and then say okay. Now I have mass and uh, a mass tag on there, and I think if I switch to my view, I have a center of gravity tag at the center of my part. I told it, I only totally gave it the tag, I didn't actually give it a point, so I, 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 I should have given it a point as well. Uh, go back to the shaded view here, I'm going to go into my measure again. This time I'm going to do get the entire body, but then I'm going to switch to a point. And I'm going to make sure my point on the curve, the point on my face uh, is turned on. I'm going to pick that face right there, and what do you think it does? gives me thickness. 
as a ray trace perpendicular to the face I picked through until it picks another, until it hits another face and tells me the thickness right there. If I pick this face, I get a, oops, I go back to my original point and adjust that one. Then I get uh, my thickness right there at that point. Again, if I go back to my angled face or my, my curvy face, then I get a distance between those guys there. So how do I do like a projected distance? So normally I would just measure, go on my measurement tool, I would do a projected distance, I'd pick this top face to infer a vector that's up, um, and then I would pick this face and then another face somewhere else that I want to measure to. Um, if I pick, say, this object, and I have just a single face up there, I grab that object, and then I grab this object, it gives me the distance between the two, and it is a vertical distance because they happen to be overlapping. But I could, if I give it a vector, I get my orient express vectors, but I can also pick other vectors that are on here, then I get a, another, a minimum projected clearance between those two faces. I can switch that to uh, maximum projected clearance. There are two faces that are parallel to each other, so that's not going to change at all. The one I want to show off here is that um, if I use my measure tool again, I'm going to pick tangent faces, pick those tangent faces as object one, these tangent faces as object two, and I have minimal distance between them. Okay, no big deal. I can do minimum, maximum distance between them. They're just going to show me a, pretty much a useless one, and then a, uh, the, a one that's actually useful, and I'll pick a vector. Oops, a vector. Go to vertical vector, and now uh, there's a new tool in here that gives me the ability to not only see minimum projected distance, maximum projected distance, but I can also do minimum projected contact. When I click on that, I'll flatten my screen out a little bit. If these two parts move together, this is the point that they're going to hit. That's what minimum projected contact is going to do for me. So it's, it, if I have two pieces in space and, and one of them is going to move, I can say, give me a minimum projected contact between those two that can be across my assembly, and it's on a slide, I can see it's going to hit. If it doesn't hit anything, it's going to come back with nothing. It's not going to see anything. So uh, without having to actually run that thing down the rail to see if it's going to run into something else, I can use, I can use my measurement tools to do that. Uh, this tool gets deep uh, quickly. If I go out to uh, uh, out to the, 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 the blog um, for NX Design, uh, Taylor Anderson and his team put together a really great, uh, I think there's 14 or 15 different videos in here to show exactly how to use this new tool. I, if you get into this, I, I encourage you to go to this webpage and check it out because the, what you can do with this tool is amazing. Um, it's completely switched on its head to how you can use the old tools. You got more functionality. You have more things you can make associative, uh, and it's a it's a it's a it's a great approach to uh, the advances in NX, making things a lot easier. Uh, if you if you just open up NX eleven oh two and twelve oh two side by side, you're going to see the just the number of tools that are presented on the toolbars um, much less than NX twelve. They're combining things together. They're doing a lot more consolidation of tool sets. So. Uh, instead of just constantly adding more and more tools so where you can't, you can't even see your screen anymore, they're, they're making things a little bit easier for us to use and faster for us to use. Let's see. Measurement examples. Okay. Any questions I want to show down so far today? At all? Can you do any more moment from this inertia and stress calculations, et cetera? You might use for cross section or the I or a B or a if I yeah, if I pull a cross section out of it, yeah, I can do a cross section like analysis. I don't know. I'd have to look at that. Okay. Um, I think it goes a little bit further than the tool goes, but um, I could I could take a look at it, see what I can do with it. Um, just just by being able to pull up the the measurements on a body. So here's my body again. If I go into my settings down here, so it says here, you get these little hints too, this is great. You get these little hints, it says for thickness, select or define a point on a face of the selected body or, or a point pair. So it's telling you that you could do more things with this right here. If I go into settings for this part and I look at my, my uh, measurements for body, I can turn on and off different things. So I can turn on error estimates, turn off principal axes, moments of inertia right there. I can turn on density, which we haven't had before. Uh, turn off weight, say okay, and anything, anything that I pick over here will become mm -hmm. associative, where before it was just an information window. Can you convert to English? 
Imperial food. Yes. So there's here's another one too. So I'm working in um, a metric part. If I want to see everything in, in, in inch, there was on the analysis tab in NX11, it was like a more pull down. Down here, there was a, 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 a units convert or a units a manager. They moved that tool over here to uh, tools, units manager. And now I can say I want uh, preferred data entry units. I can switch that to English. And object information units, I can switch that to English. That was a full call. Too much time to use the soap. So now if I do that same measure and pick this all about it, I should have everything in pounds, mass, feet. Um, and uh, so the cross units problem is always a problem in NX, has been a problem since well, 45 years now. Um, we've got a, I got a client in Idaho that their parent company is in Europe, but nobody in Idaho knows the metric system. So I we built their seeds as all all metric, and we put an, an, an basically an inch overlay on top of it by changing the the, the input values. And we're running in a couple little weird things as far as like when you export out of a DXF from a flat pattern or a sheet metal part, you have to know that where it's going. Isn't an inch, and it's not an inch DXF, so it's going to scale properly. Um, but that's just a process we had to figure out. Uh, questions? Anything at all? Who's next up here, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> I think I have the agenda up here, too. Oh, that would be Chris. So while he's while he's getting ready to get up here, um, yeah. Yeah. if I did a measurement between, uh, like, say, this spline and then an object set down here, and I tell it that I want it to be uh, associative, create geometry, and say OK, I get my little, uh, how, what the distance is, I have a little line here that's created for me, and I'm going to go in and translate this. Move it down a little bit, and now I have a new minimum distance. That shows up. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool tool. All right, Chris, what you set up here? Yeah. Well,